brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. From the Ramsey Network, it's the Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw. Next to me is Dr. John Deloney, and we're taking your calls. We're talking about your life and your money. We're helping people build wealth, do work that they love, and have amazing relationships. This is a live show. You can give us a call if you want to call in. The number is 888-825-5225, and we'll try and get you on the line and try to hook you up with the advice that you need. All right, John, you ready to do this? Let's go. Let's go straight to the phone lines. We've got Jody in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What up, Jody? Hi, how are you? <laughs> doing great. How can we help today? Hi. Well, I'm, oh, I can't believe I called in and, and doing this. But anyways, um, I am in a very um, emotionally abusive, emotionally and financially abusive relationship. Um, I've been with him for 18 years. We have a nine-year-old daughter and I need out. And I, I, I start trying to figure out plans and I like will research this and research that and then I'll put this in order and then I and um I become this paralyzed whirlpool of this is I you know what I'm saying like I could probably help other people but my brain and I'm just emotionally exhausted too so I don't think that helps <laughs> um what, ha- what, so what happened kinda, Jody something happened that said oh, you said this is enough what happened um you know I think I have um, a blood clotting disorder, and I had a blood clot um, at the beginning of the summer, a a deep vein blood clot Mm -hmm. in my leg, um, Mm -hmm. and they are incredibly painful, Um, also potentially life-threatening. I've had a couple of ones. I had one in my pelvis after my pregnancy that um, came close to damaging my heart. I had some in my lungs, things like that. So it's a really serious thing, and um, I... I'm sitting on the recliner and he comes home from work and starts screaming at me to get off my lazy butt that I'm on his chair and blah, 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 blah. Hmm. And I mean, that's just one example. And I mean, my daughter and I are both staring at him and I said, I don't know why you think you can talk to me like this. Hmm. And I mean, I, you know, like it's a big deal. <laughs> my blood clot is a big deal. And I just, I've been done before and then things happened and I allowed my plans to become derailed and everything like that. And so I- Okay, do me a favor right now, do me a favor right now, Jody. Uh Uh-huh. Where is all of this in your body? Is it in your chest? It is. (laughs) Okay. Take your fist and put it in your chest right now. Uh Uh-huh. Take a humongous deep breath real big and then exhale it out. (sighs) Drop your shoulders as low as you can go. Pull them down, okay? Okay. And here's why we're doing this exercise. This is what happens inside your mind, too. Yeah. When you start researching stuff, isn't it? It spins faster and faster and faster and faster. Yes. And then it feels chaotic, and then your daughter comes in and says, hey, can you help me with my lunch tomorrow? And then you're off to the next thing, and this thing never resolves itself, and it just spins faster, and it's heavier and heavier. Yes. The only way I've learned, and, and, and I'm like you, I get pretty emotional, Got a heart, I don't have anything like what you're dealing with at home, but when I get emotional, I spin and I go faster and faster and faster. And the only way I've learned to be able to walk through those things is with other people. I have been gathering my friends and family. I've um, kind of explained where I'm at. Uh, but listen to me. Um, you're doing a lot yeah. of, you're using other people and you're using your internet searches as Xanax. Yes. You need and to that's find why I'm somebody. Calling. I want a practical plan. You need to sit with a, a lawyer that you are paying, yes. that you are on the clock with, because that will force you to laser in and say, what do you want to do next? Otherwise, you just have a bunch of people that you talk to and talk to and talk to and talk to and talk to. Mm-hmm. And you've got you've got to have a you've got to have a gang. You got to have people that will listen to you and that will sit with you and will show up with casseroles. But you need to have somebody who will say, here's what happens if you do a. Here's what happens with B Mm -hmm. and someone that will walk you through step by step. Here is legally and practically what happens next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there'll be financial ramifications. There will be um, custody ramifications. There will be all sorts of ramifications. Yeah. But I want you to stop spinning and sit with somebody. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, some attorneys aren't people of character and they'll take your money. They'll let you spin all day long and they'll just put you on the clock. 
most of the ones right. I've ever met with care deeply about their clients, and they will say, okay, if you're hiring me to go to war, let's go to war. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, what's your next move? I I will – well, lawyer, retainer. Okay. Um, I have a friend who said that she would help me get the money. I have no money. I have nothing well, in that's, my Well, that's my next and question that's my is fault. what does yeah. this mean for you? Because you've got to eat. I'm – Yes, and I um, met with an employment specialist. Okay. Um, I had gotten a therapist um, and a psychiatrist because um, I was depressed, and I um, was undiagnosed ADHD for okay. many years. And um, so, you know, and tell me about um, your job. They, tell me about your job. Oh, she's so awesome! But but this is this is why I need to go. This is taking its toll on her. Okay. And as he was sitting there yelling at me. I'm like, I don't want her to think that. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Tell me about your job, not your child. Tell me about your oh, job. What are you going to do for money? I'm sorry. If you leave, um, how are you going to eat yeah. and where are you going to live? Um, I told the employment specialist we're meeting um, next week to um, help me with my resume. Okay. And um, I am, um, my heart is in the nonprofit world. However, I told them that my first priority is to make enough money for me to be able to live on my own and support my daughter. There you go. Have, have you ever um, done that before? Um, lived on my own, yes. Okay. Then you well, can do it again. Kind of, as a student, yes. Okay. I know I can do this. That, that's the thing. Like, I know that I can do this. I keep tripping myself up. I know I'm worth more. Mm-hmm. And um, more than anything, and the reason I'm willing to accept help from my friends and family financially is that I owe my daughter more. Mm-hmm. And um, part of the reason that I've been also kind of de- um, not putting it off is um, I know, um, I know he's going to make it so ugly, and I know he's going to drag her in it. But I tell myself he's already dragged her mm-hmm. in it, yeah. and I've allowed it. And in leaving him, I, I think I hope that that means I'm not dragging her in it. I'm dragging her out of it. And if he continues to drag her in it, I will just have to do my best to. So let, let, let's let's to solve that. Let's solve that problem when we get there. Let's do the next okay. right thing in front of us. And okay. Jade's going to walk you through the four walls, but these are the things I want you to put on a list. I want you to sit down with a trusted yep. friend or or um, a, a, a couple friend that you trust that you can yes. walk through what this actually means because these have to be real numbers. They can't be feelings and thoughts. They have to be real numbers. And I want you to sit right. with an attorney. And if you need to leave and go stay with somebody because your home's not safe, then do that right now, mm-hmm. like today. Physically, I'm safe. I am okay. physically safe. I really do believe that. Okay. But not mentally. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, when you get when you make that leap and you, you know, walk out of this thing, the thing that you're going to have to focus on first is just making sure that you can pay for your shelter. Like you've got to find a place that you can live that you can afford. After that, it's utilities. After that, it's food. After that, it's transportation because you need to be able to get to work and back. And so those four things before you get off the line today, we're going to get you set up with every dollar um, and, and totally for free so that you can use that you can start budgeting you can start looking at what your life is going to look like financially i think that you making this choice i know you said you were worried about dragging your daughter through it but she's also going to see something really great of a woman who says i'm not going to be treated like this and i get to decide and she's going to take that and carry that with her and it's going to mean a lot for her so ooh, tough stuff good job john we're blessed we're praying for you this call us back anytime show. Listen to the Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw, joined by Dr. John Deloney. Today, as we take your calls, you can give us a call. Numbers 888-825-5225. Get in where you fit in. Hey, guys, all the time we're talking about the steps and the changes that you need to make in order to change your money, your career, your mental health, uh, even your relationships every single day, because we know none of it is happening by accident, okay? It takes intentionality to do this. It takes hard work. So, Here's how we're going to come alongside you and help you. Uh, We're excited to announce that today we're having a one day, today only, flash sale. You can get fan favorites for $10. 
dollars. Now, like I said, these are things that are going to help you do all the things that we tell you to do. So for instance, I've got them right here. Uh, we've got Baby Steps Millionaires. We're talking to you about the importance of building wealth. This book is going to show you how to do it. It's $10. We've got uh, books by Rachel Cruz. Know yourself, know your money. You can explore your behavior and see how it's the biggest obstacle to you making good choices with your money. You can take a closer look at your behavior. It'll help you look at your belief systems around money. This is a banger. You need to get that one. $10. Or uh, books like my, my guy right here, Own Your Past, Change Your Future by Dr. John Deloney. I mean, this is great. You have the five steps that will help you plan uh, to live a happy and healthy life. That's a good one. $10. John, this book should be like $100. That's what I'm saying. But you know what I'm saying? And I love then, it of when course, Dave uh, sells our books for cheap. He cuts <laughs> our commissions. Way to go, D-Money. <laughs> well, then, you know, you got books by my guy, Ken Coleman, from purpose, from paycheck to purpose. And that's going to help you if you're, you know, kind of in a career situation, if you feel stuck, if you feel you're in a drought, uh, if you feel like you're just clocking in and clocking out. Ken is the guy that will help you break free. And so again, one day only, this is a one day only sale, flash sale, uh, today only, you can get these sort resources, really tools that you need at ramseysolutions.com slash sale. Or you can click the link in the description if you're listening on YouTube or podcast. Don't wait, guys. The sale ends today when the stock market closes. The, I don't know if it's at 5 o'clock. At 11.59 p.m. I feel okay. like one of those floppy guys in front of a car dealership. The wacky wavies? The wacky wavy. Is that what they're called? Is that what they're called? These. There we go. At yeah, 11.59. Don't, don't put the camera on Thursday, me August 22nd. Make it happen. Ten bucks. Go get them. Y'all don't want to see my wacky wavy? <laughs> they refuse. There it is. They cut All away. Right. I know. They don't. Nobody wants to see that. All right. Let's go to We the should phones. start a band called the Wacky Wavies. I like it. That's right. an amazing band. Slide guitar. Slide guitar. Okay. Let's go. Natasha is in Kansas City, Missouri. What's going on, Natasha? Hi, guys. How are you? Good. What do you think about the band name Wacky Wavy? Oh, I don't know. I'm probably not the right person to ask. <laughs> that means we're on to something. I'm not a musician. I'm not a musician. I don't know. Well, how can we help you today? Um, well, so I just wanted to I listen to the show all the time. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Um, so my husband and I have several rental, rental properties. And a couple years ago, we bought a property with the idea that his mom, who was in the midst of a divorce, uh, could live in that house. And obviously we didn't want to dictate anything for her, but she's been living there and she, I think would like to stay, which we're totally fine with. Mm -hmm. um, but she has approached us about maybe putting an addition on the house. Um, and I think it's fine. I want, we, we desperately want her to be happy and, you know, we want it to be a blessing to her, mm -hmm. but, um, We've never had a business partner in any of our, like, rental properties, and so I feel a little bit weird mm -hmm. with the idea of her paying for some portion, even though I know she's living in the house. So I, I just wanted to make sure, like, I'd love to just, like, give her the green light. We really would be tickled, honestly, if she, it's a blessing to her and she stays forever as far as we're concerned. But is, is there anything I'm not thinking of, Yeah, you know, that I should? I mean, listen, I love your heart on this. I think that you love your mother-in-law. You want you know, to her to feel like the place is hers. Um, it's not hers, mm -hmm. it's yours. Um, is she paying you rent or do you let her live there rent free? No, no, she's not paying us rent. I mean, we did, we, we, we vetted at the property as mm -hmm. a rental with the idea that if she didn't like it, we would rent it out. Because okay. Because we do have other rental properties that's part of our portfolio. So um, you're just using the other but, properties to, to float this one or is it paid for yeah, in cash? Well, so we'll, so we will have this property paid off by the end of next year, and right. we have one other. We have we have a total left of mortgages between our three between three of two are paid off. Great, five total properties. So they'll, they'll all be paid off in the next probably three and a half years. So um, then back to this idea of the addition on the house. Um, I think yeah. because here's where I think I think if you let her pay for this, um, and something happens because no, you know. Nobody knows what's around the corner, right? There's going to be some feeling right. that it's her house. And I put this money into the addition and it just feels like it could get very messy very quickly. Even if you put it in writing, which if you decide to do this, definitely put it in writing. The amount that she's putting into it, what would happen if the house 
uh, were to sell or if she were to move, how does she get her money back? That sort of thing. Um, but more than that, you want to know what I would just do. It's your house. If you want an addition on it, just put an addition on it. That's what I would do. Well, that's what I was one. That's uh, what I was wondering. Should we just pay for it? Yes. I would. And it's not worth your relationship with your mother-in-law. Because mm-hmm. here's what's going to happen. You're like, well, by the way, what's this addition for? So it, it's a cute little starter house, but I think she'd like a house that has more room for mm-hmm. her grandkids to be over. I mean, I, I really and honestly, it, it's in a great neighborhood. We bought a little house with plenty of room. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people in the area have done additions, so I think there's plenty of upside financially to doing the addition but i did i have like this little bit of angst like should we just pay for it yeah because here's what's gonna happen what she wants you're gonna pull out you're gonna pull out the back wall and you're gonna find a ton of termite damage exactly a nicer kitchen and uh, she would like she wants the washer dryer upstairs Uh so when she gets older it's not an issue which i told yeah it makes sense what what about just moving her to one of these other houses i was gonna ask that same thing so the other properties that we have, we did offer to her initially when we when she was moving, and she wasn't keen. Some of the they're they're all stairs. They all have stairs. Okay. So this is the only. This one is a, a single family, nice little ranch. What's it going to cost um, you? In a great neighborhood. To do the addition. I, we haven't even looked, but I, I'm guessing. I would I would guess we wouldn't pay more than like a hundred. Do you have cash? Um, it's a it's a it's a two hundred thousand dollar. Well, we won't do it if we don't have cash. But good. Um, we, we I love how you said that. You're like, listen. <laughs> I would not. I would yeah. not take her money. I would keep this clean. This is y'all's place, um, and it's only a, it's in our trust. And we and we're in a we're in a really good financial spot. We, I mean, we're worth several million dollars yeah, now. Yeah, we're yeah, you are. Yeah, but, good job. If y'all feel like you I, want to do this, I, I would. I would. Pay, I would pay for it. And I would not take her money. And I would tell her, hey, thank you so much for offering. But I want you to. to we want you to live to be 125, and so we want to make sure you can afford it all the way down. And we've been blessed, and we can do this. It just keeps everything yeah. so clean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's not you I'm worried about. It's not your husband. It's not her. It's it's your brother-in-law who has a gambling debt that you don't know about that turns to sue. I mean, just we would not have a job yeah. if every family acted like you and your husband and your mother-in-law. Yeah. It always goes sideways, yeah. and if every contractor was honest and no trees fell through houses, and so <laughs> I would just keep the lines as clean as possible or deed her the house, give it to her, and say, this is Merry Christmas, and just make sure you put it in your will that we get it back and do that. Give it away to her. That's pretty cool. Um, but I, Oh, that's an idea. I keep too. the lines yeah. as clean as possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, we've not, like I said, we've never had business partners or anything for that reason. It's like yeah. we're, we're the entity or the engine. Even, even just, when people call and they've done all the paperwork and they've written it the right way, there's still something that causes a saltiness or an animosity. And that's why I said before, even if you were to do all of that, it still doesn't make up for the, the feelings that ensue after the fact. And so I'm with John, I would either pay and have this addition put on with your own $100,000 cash. Or I would deed her the house and say, hey, really, this is our gift to you. Whatever changes you want to make, it's yours free and clear. I, I like that idea. You guys have done really, really well. Um, and this is the stuff that we talk about. You know, you live like no one else. Later, you're able to, to, to give like no one else. And this is giving on a whole nother level. Yeah, and I just don't want to see next Christmas... There's a lot of tension because she's doing something to your house with money she doesn't have. Oh, just, man. Just don't. Keep the lines clean because mm-hmm. you love each other. Yeah, I like that. This is The Ramsey Show. going on you're listening to the ramsey show my name is jade warshaw next to me is dr john deloney if you don't know now you know you guys need to know about dr john john tell him about yourself my name's john <laughs> <laughs> my friends call me john yeah dude my friends call me john my wife calls me john does anybody call you johnny my kids call me old man no 
I wanted to be Johnny because of Karate Kid, but never stuck. Is it short for Jonathan? Nope. John- I think they were going to call me Jonathan, and my mom said when I was born, I just look like a John. So she, she Just John. She called it. All right. I yeah. like it. She's, All right. She called it. Well, he's the guy that's going to take the calls about your relationships if you're dealing with things going on in that side of things, mental health world, wellness world. He's got you covered. I'm here for the money side. So if you want to call us, the number is 888-825-5225. If you didn't know, it's a live show. And so we'll get you on. Let's go to the phone lines. Oh, before we do, let me just say... um, John and I have jobs because of you guys. <laughs> so we're really grateful that you listen to the show, that you uh, listen on podcasts, that you log in on YouTube, that you pull it up, you know, you turn the radio dial, some of you, and you listen to us on the radio. And we're really grateful for that. So if you could do us a solid here and wherever you listen to the show, like it, subscribe and share. If you can do those three things, it'll cost you like two seconds of your time. And we'd be so grateful because when you do that, not only does it share the show with other people, but it makes the show more accessible, uh, the way the internet works and the way all these things work together. So that would help us a lot. We know that you already do it. Keep doing it is what I'm trying to say. All right, let's go to the phone lines. We've got Nick in Chicago, Illinois, Chi-Town. What's going on, Nick? Hi, I was just calling because um, my wife and I, are trying to study for a house and I've talked to her about having a budget and for some reason she says that we can stick to a budget and I have like just used my notes app on my phone and talked about it with her but it seems like it's like ten dollars here twenty dollars here fifty dollars here and it adds up and I don't think she really realizes it Mm -hmm. so I'm just calling to like ask um how I can like talk to her talk to her about it in a way where like she can get on board and then like how she can like stick to the budget that I'm wanting to stick to. If that makes sense. <laughs> so there could be two things at play. Um, it could be that the budget is not quite realistic enough. It could be, I don't know. I always say that budgets should be three things, detailed, realistic, and flexible. So just that first pass here, there's part of me that thinks it's probably not hitting the, the mark in one or more of those areas. Um, did you tell me that you're using the notes app to budget or you're using the notes app to decide what to say to her? Um, no, we've just written down like all of our expenses and gotcha. then like, all of our, um, how much we make and then all of our expenses per month. Okay, so that's another part of this. You know, having the right tool is what's going to make budgeting something that you can stick to and that you can do for the long haul. It makes it more enjoyable. Um, it's really hard to stick to a budget that's written just in the notes app. I'm I'm just going to tell you that. So I think I think here what we need here is the right set of tools and the right set of parameters and how to work the tool. So before you leave today, I'm going to get you set up with every dollar. It's the best budgeting app there is because on it, um, it's not a notes app. It's it's a really great app that you can have on your phone. It's on her phone. It's working with you in time. So if you make a purchase on your phone, she sees it on her phone. And it's something as simple as, hey, uh, I'm going to the grocery store. I I just need to see how much we can spend. And you open up the app and it says $300. And you're like, great. And then when you make that purchase at the grocery store, you spent $50. It automatically goes into the app. And now you can see now I only have $250 left to spend. So it's going to do that math for you. And it's going to keep you guys on top of your numbers. I think that's going to go a really, really long way. And then it's going to help you to see, um, okay, the numbers that we said, are they accurate? Like, does this actually work with our life? Because it's possible, um, Nick, that she's going over budget because what you've said is just not a realistic amount. Could I be right about that? Or Yeah, possibly. I just feel like, I feel like just her, like knowing like how much is left or Mm -hmm. how much we like is in the budget to like go out to eat and stuff like that. Like we have like a budget for that, Mm -hmm. but I feel like it always goes over. Um, But it's also a notes app. So you're constantly like, it's almost like an old school ledger that you're having to. Yeah, no, I guess you mean like the app or whatever you're talking about. I feel like it seems like something a lot more practical. Do Uh do y'all do this budget together? Or do you sit down and say, um, yeah, and, like, or do you I, tell her? I, I sat down originally and wrote it out. Yeah, you and did. And we sat down together yeah. and looked at it together and went over it together and agreed, like, hey, this is not right, this is right, and then we should change a few okay. things, but that didn't seem to work. How long have you been doing that? Um, Six months. Okay. 
I give every dollar a try and see if it helps. Next thing I want to know is the area that she's go the areas that she's going over. Is it the same areas every month? Yeah, it's mostly just shopping and eating out. So you're both eating out or only she's eating out? Or she'll um typically on like her lunch break from work, she'll eat Got out. Got you. Okay. So she's going out for lunch. Um, and then what's the other area you said? Shopping, like for clothes? Like shopping. Okay. Yeah. So next question is what baby step are you guys on? Uh we're debt free. Um and we don't we're we're pretty much saving for a house. We don't have any debt. How much have you saved so far? Renting. What? How much have you saved so far for the house? Um, twenty four thousand. Okay, good. And what's the goal? We're trying trying to get it as high as possible, but my, our goal was originally eighty thousand, okay. and our it hasn't really changed like the past like four months. We haven't really made any progress on saving more. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm just trying to get to the core because I don't I don't want to say anything that's not quite right. How long did it take you to pay off your debt and save up the three to six months before you started this? Um, most of it was done. Um, most of it was done by me before we had uh, gotten married. So I feel I, I okay. we didn't she didn't have any debt. I paid off my debt before we got, got married. And okay, then, so she didn't um, have debt. She comes into this and it's like we're in saving mode, basically yeah, for the whole but... marriage. Okay, um, Nick, you keep saying we. There's no we here. You paid off debt. You you built a budget. You want to buy a house. She wants to eat lunch with yeah. her friends and buy clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I also ask another she tells probing me that she question? Wants to buy a house. She tells me she's so passionate about it. She can't wait to do it. She wants to do it. Yeah, but, but behavior is a language. Like... So she's being pretty clear about what she really believes. Uh -huh. What is the clothing budget? What is the food the out to eat budget? Like we've said, like a hunt, uh, for like eating out uh -huh. for her, we said um, once a week go out and eat. And I said like $10 a week once a week that's what we agreed on so forty dollars um, yeah and then and what's then, the clothes the forty dollars a month and what's the shopping and then budget? I and then we had originally agreed on going once a month shopping with a fifty dollar budget of that okay and, and what's you like guys's income the, combined what's your combined income one hundred thousand okay i think that she feels a little suffocated she's like we make a hundred thousand dollars a year i'm working he's working I want to spend more than $40 on restaurants and maybe I want to spend. So when she goes over shopping, I'm trying to meet in the middle because I'm not saying she's right. And I'm not saying yeah. she's wrong. You're wrong. When she goes over budget okay. for clothes, how much does she go over? Like she's spending like $300 a month the last few months on clothes. Okay. She's tripping a little bit. Let's be honest about that. So maybe it's, Hey, I noticed you're going over $50 isn't cutting it. Can we go to 150? Can we go to, can we go to 100? Try to meet her in the middle because what I think what I think could be happening, and John, you could pop in here, but I think she's like, we don't have any debt. Like, we've got three to six months of savings. I don't want to feel so tight. I want a house, but I don't want to feel so, so tight. There, That might be gotcha. going on. Try to meet her halfway on that. And um, other than that, it's you guys sitting down and having a, a big kid's conversation about do we want a house or do we not want a house? And maybe it's you rolling out the numbers and saying, hey, if we keep going at this rate, we're not going to have a house until the year 2034 you know what i mean and it's just you being yeah. honest about what's actually going on and then you know see see where it goes from there it's not easy these conversations are not easy this is the ramsey show
Thank you for listening to The Ramsey Show on The Ramsey Network. I'm Jade Warshaw. Next to me is Dr. John Deloney. We're taking your calls. And here's the thing. Sometimes you guys call. We have a number here that you can um, leave a message if you have a question or something you want to talk about. Sometimes people call and we miss the call. So if we missed your call, sorry we missed your call. Uh, We'll get to it. Matter of fact, we have a voicemail here uh, from Meredith. Uh, Let's take a listen. I have a question about how did you go from being on welfare to being in the baby steps? It seems very, very scary to go from being on food stamps and Medicaid and all of that stuff to switching to paying for everything yourself. Not really sure how to change that. I know it's a mindset, but I'm not really sure how to get from point A to point B without hurting myself and my children drastically. Mm. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Okay. That that's a that's a deep one, John. Yeah, I like that you said it's a mindset. So I want to separate. I have a close friend of mine who, um, right before she had child number three, um, husband left. Like was in desperate need of support and care, right? So um, I think we're, I I love that we can support and care people who Mm -hmm. um, find themselves in the margins when life happens, right? Um, I get a different vibe from Meredith and I loved how she said it, she said it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And there can come a point when the world that we've set up for for some of our our citizens is, you know what, you're never going to be enough. Mm-hmm. You just sit over there in the corner, we're going to pat you on the head, and well, somebody's going to come take care of you because you, mm-hmm. you can't do this. Yeah. And over a long period of time, you begin to believe you're less than. Yeah. That you can't. 100%. And she, I love this question she's asking because she's saying, no, I want to. I want to stand up and I want to be, a, I want to be in the driver's seat of my own life. And it's terrifying because I've got this sense Everybody's been treating me for so long, and I've been living this way I, that I can't. I don't know how. I'll never know enough. I'm just going to hurt everybody. I'm going to screw everything up. And y'all told me to go sit in the corner and pat me on the head. Y'all just y'all just send money in the mail, and mm. it's going to be all, all good. And so for someone to merit the situation, I think it's important to keep this one word and, and always keep this word front and center, which is practice. Yes. I'm just going to practice. It's a skill that I don't have. I've never done this thing. And I'm going to practice this. Mm -hmm. And I have to practice. I've never had a high school kid. I have one right now. Just started. I'm having to practice being a high school dad because I've never done it before. And I'm already not doing a great job at it, right? Mm -hmm. I've never been the, the, the dad of a third grader. I've never done that. I'm practicing a third grade daughter. I've never done that. I'm practicing it. Similar, if you've never paid for anything and... Often this this generational poverty can be generational, right? Yeah. You, you you learn that. You learn how to sign up, learn how to work the system. Somebody hands you helps you out. I've never done it before. Okay, cool. We're gonna take we're gonna take baby steps. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how, how money works. We're mm-hmm. gonna watch these courses. We're going to get a job. Well, you've also not and you on know, and on. Had to had the opportunity to like stretch your legs on it. Because That's right. if if you're in these if you're in these programs, there's limits. Like, hey, if you if you earn beyond this, you, you no you longer off. get the crutch. We cut you off. And I'm thinking about like follow me on this. Uh, in college, I played volleyball and I was a middle blocker and I went up for a block and this crooked thumb snapped all the way back mm. and I tore the ligaments all the way through. And it was the most painful thing I've ever done, even more painful than childbirth. Mm. So I had this guard that I used to have to wear. And after a while, um, the, the trainer was like, hey, you got to take that guard off. And I was like, oh, I can't take the guard off. Like, I'm going to feel pain. I don't know. Like, I, it was, it, it, it was, it made me so afraid to play the game I loved playing without this guard on because I was like, for sure, I'm going to snap my ligaments again. And then you find yourself going up with two hands, but kind of like hedging halfway, the one. Yeah, yeah like halfway. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know, you've got this. And I'm like, you're never going to know what you can do until you just up and do it. You got to stretch your legs. You got to play. You got to take the guard off and see. You but know she, what adds, she adds a very interesting component here. I don't want to hurt my kids. Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's a mm-hmm. lot of weight on that. Hey, you just got to go and. You got to go do this. But the thing is, you're on it until you're exceeding it. That's right. So once you're exceeding it, you're exceeding it. And it's like, okay, I can do more. I can keep going. I don't need this crutch any longer. It was there for a season. It was never intended to be something that you had for the rest of your life. Mm. And so I think that's the part she's got to understand is, okay, this was here to just kind of like raise me up a little bit and get me to that point. But I'm to that point now. I I can go forward and... 
you know. I think you have to be real about very, very, very real mm-hmm. about the dollars and cents. We took a call earlier. Yes. How much does my house cost? What yes. are my electric bill? What's my water bill? What is my mm-hmm. gas bill? What is food in this mm-hmm. house? What's transportation look like? How stable is this job? Do I need a second job? What's childcare? Yes. You have to be honest about those numbers. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to say, I just want to be done with this. Mm-hmm. Great. But, but if you're not ready, math then... may not be done with you. That's right. Right. Same as we talk to people on the other side. It's like, I'm just going to buy this house. Math doesn't care what you want to yeah. do, yep. right? Yep. So it's being honest about these numbers, and then we're going to practice. Mm-hmm. And you will mess it up. Mm-hmm. If you've never stretched your legs, mm-hmm. you, you're mm-hmm. going to fall down. That's okay. It's part of it. That's why we have coaches that walk alongside people. That's, That's right. why we have budget that gives you a good framework for it. Um, and we'll walk with you every step of the way. But yeah. keep that word in mind. Practice. Any of us. The, the cool cultural thing to do now is to scream and yell at people who are trying to change. Mm. Just beat them back to the place where they deserve. That's good job. I, I see men trying to become different kinds of men. And they're beat up on both sides. And what do they do? They stop. I don't want to take it. I see women, same thing. See those with the least of these, those who are trying to learn to give. So you're going to have to ignore the voices and you're going to have to go do the next right thing. And we all have to practice. That's okay. We're learning new skills. We're going to go make it happen. I like that. That's good, John. All right. Let's try to take a call. We've got Darren in Boise, Idaho. What's going on, Darren? Well, uh, good afternoon. I've got um, a couple of questions for you. I have um, a HELOC that I'm I'm paying on. We had we had some big issues in our kitchen, and we felt that it was probably best to just redo the kitchen and try to make a few different things work with it. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a hole in the bottom of our oven, so we couldn't use our oven. Our cooktop wasn't working anymore. Uh, so we, we just, we redid our kitchen. What'd you, what was so the HELOC about, for? Amount? Well, it was, oh, uh, $40,000. Okay. What else you got? We redid it. Um, and then we just, we have our home and that's it. Okay. Uh, we have our home on a 15 year mortgage. We have 180, uh, 188,000 left and it's nice. at 2.25%. Okay. Um, so my question is this, I'm, I'm 53. I, um, I'm, I'm investing in my 401k, uh, doing the catch up. So it's like 30,000 a year. Okay. And I'm, I'm wondering, should I, should I drop that for a year and pay off this HELOC? Is that going to, I mean, it's going to hurt me a little bit, but you know, we're, we're okay. We got about, we almost have $600,000 in our 401k. Yeah. Um, and then, and so if I do that, then also then what is my tax liability? Cause my taxable income is going to jump way up and my, my taxes are going to be brutal. Um, it probably won't be I, that, I that bad. No, no it's it not going to, when your tax bracket changes, your, your whole pay, your, the whole isn't amount isn't on that bracket. It's just the amount that puts you into that bracket. So you're not going to, it's not going to be a bloodbath here. How much do you make? Um, our combined household income is is about two hundred thousand. Bro, I, it's I, not I here's be a what you've done. You put your house on the block for a new kitchen. I I would Sorry, get say that again. I would get. You put the house on the block. You went to the bank and said, "Hey, you give us a kitchen, and if we don't pay you back, you can have our house." I would take my house. Yeah. I, I I would be much more concerned long term that somebody else has the keys to my front door. Than, than not, than any kind of interest rate, any kind of tax implication. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so you would you would stop putting money into your 401k? I, I, would, I, would. I would stop everything and pay that HELOC off. Your the, house is on the on the chopping block right now. The key here is, Darren, you've really dropped back to baby step two on this. We always say that if the HELOC is more than is less than half of the total value, then it goes into baby step two. So you owe 188. The HELOC is 40. So for all intents and purposes, you're on baby step two. And so that's us pausing. Uh, pausing retirement if you wanted to take some of the money that you had in savings and put it onto this and then rebuild that up you could do that but you're back in baby step two Um, it's not going to take you long to pay it off and rebuild your savings and get back to investing but that's the bed you made and so you kind of have to lay in it and I hate to tell you that because it feels not fun at 53 years old but you guys made that choice this is the Ramsey show
LaJill is with us. LaJill is in Detroit. Hi, LaJill. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Hey. Hi. What's up? Hi. So um, I am trying to go from Dave Fish to full on Dave. <laughs> and um, I'm a, like a serial entrepreneur. So like I bring in a lot of money a lot of different ways. But my question is, um, should I, well, I'm paying off debt. Should I focus on like just the business I have that makes me money instead of putting out money for my other businesses to make money, if that makes sense? How many are making money? So like, okay, for example, I throw like parties. I'm an event planner. So I maybe spend like $1,200, but I'll make a couple grand. So I don't know if I should be putting that money out to do that. Wait a minute. You well, you, you spend twelve hundred dollars and you make thirty two hundred profit right. of a couple grand. Right. That's debt you're paying off every time you do that. All right. I mean, so profit is profit. Yeah. I mean, you're not you're not spending the money and it's not coming back. It's coming back to you instantaneously, almost, isn't it? Yeah, it comes back the well the day of the party. Yeah, yeah. a couple months later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So which business? Is, which that one's not losing money. And well, I have like, I have like, um, like social media type stuff, and that's the stuff that doesn't necessarily make me money right here and now. And then I also do like drawing and logos and stuff, and that that makes me money when people like ask for it. But I don't know if I should really get into like the full on advertising and content creating side of things, or I should just wait for all that type of stuff. You should. You should wait to expand. Right now, you just want to do things that make you money so you get out of baby step two fast, quick as possible, right? So we can delay the stuff that you want to maybe expand one day once we're in a position to do so. Five, five years from today, do you want to be in the logo business or the event planning business? Do I want to be in the what or the event planning? Do you want to be in event planning or logos? Which one? Event planning. Okay. Start doing that now then. Quit screwing around with 17 things. You get no power when you don't focus. I would focus okay. on I'd focus on event planning and blow it up. Put all your time, all your energy, all your effort, all your creative waking hours into one thing. Uh, working three different businesses is a recipe for getting none of them off the ground. Okay. Well, th I also, so my main source of income is actually like grocery delivery where I do like chip Instacart type things. And I'm, I make pretty, actually make pretty good money doing that. Okay. So but I that's not, that's not what we're talking about. That's a, that's a stopgap until the event business gets big enough that you don't have to do that anymore. Right. Yeah. So if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year doing event planning, you wouldn't be doing any of this other crap. Very true. Okay. Okay, I will do that. I'm going to send you a copy. Of, I'm going to send you a copy of a quick read we have called the Momentum Theorem. And the Momentum Theorem is this: focused intensity over time multiplied by God creates unstoppable momentum. And this book will take you about an hour and a half to read max. Okay? And it explains okay. exactly what this focused intensity looks like. And you have the exact opposite of that. You have dispersed intensity, which has no power to it. It feels like that. The older yeah. I get, the more I feel yeah. powerless. <laughs> yeah. Light dispersed lights a room. Light focused you can do surgery with. It's called a laser. And I want you to be laser. And you're going to move this business into the stratosphere when you do. Because you got so much energy on you. There's so much joy coming off of you. You, 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 you're like the ultimate event planner. This is going to be great. Oh, yeah. And, again, you have a side hustle that's actually spinning off real profit. That's where you put, put your focus right now. We're trying to generate income to get out of debt, get the emergency fund in place, and that changes your entire perspective. So, I mean, this is the focus here is absolutely the word. You know, trying to do too many things is exhausting, too. Oh, yeah. You know, on top of everything else. It's, it's enough to get out of debt. You don't need all these other distractions. It's a little bit of the problem we've got with a whole bunch of things in our culture today. People's inability to keep their eye on the ball, mm -hmm. to stay and play through, to have some grit, to stick with something all the way through and finish <laughs> it up. And, um, you know, I want work-life balance, but I want to spend 40 hours a week on my screens. 
Uh, yeah. So, no, I think you need to get off your stupid screens and uh, actually look in the eyes of your family, actually be present physically with your family, um, and, and then not wonder why relationships are bad because right. you're not because you suck at them. Right. And then one of the things that we see in, in, in this case here is is we prospect as opposed to digging deep. Like we're going to invest, right? It's like our investment strategy that you've taught for decades. It's slow and steady wins the race. It's disciplined, yeah, low but we're, risk. We're, but you're drilling to the core. We're not That's just right. skimming the surface. That's right. None we're of this not, prospecting. We're not, we're not strip mining. Here. Right. And so the serial entrepreneurs can fall prey to that to go, well, I'm going to try this because this could strike, but I'm going to do this and hedge my bets over here. Maybe this will strike. And as opposed to digging deep to get that oil, like we're going to commit and go deep. And that's where you see long-term success so, financially, relationally, your health, everything. Yeah, the reason I can smell this out is because I used to do it. Right. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm 23 years, 24 years old buying real estate like crazy hand over fist. And I almost, in the middle of all of that, financed $25,000 worth of quarter machines to put at the market to pump air into your tires. Yeah. When they first started charging for air, <laughs> I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world, and I thought this is going to work. And I almost stopped what I was doing because I'm a serial entrepreneur and ADD right. as I can be right. and stopped doing this successful real estate thing that was working and went and bought air machines. That's how dumb I am. Yeah. By the and, way, those things never work. When I need air, can never get one that works, Dave. I don't know about that. Bought I bought my own machine. Not my fault because I didn't buy it. So, <laughs> so you, have to, you have to turn yeah, turn your complaint into a, the Department of Complaints. That's a nuisance complaints. you don't need, right? Yeah, really. Wow.